have a few words from uh, his Nandumar Prabhu and Subhashni Mataji. Uh, Subhashni Mataji Prabhu, can you hear us? Hare Krishna. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna. My pronouns to Maharaj. Uh, we've, we've had the good fortune of having Maharaj visit us very many times in the times of the past. Mm, in the last year or something has been very difficult for all of us. But thanks to technology, we're getting this opportunity. So my pronouns to you, Maharaj. Uh, so as always, Vikram National Nursing Swami Maharaj was uh, initiated by Srila Prabhupada in 71 and uh, uh, soon received a second initiation. And we've been preaching uh, for very many years in Asian countries, including India, Philippines, China, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Thailand. And through the many years, uh, he has touched many devotees and changed their lives. Life. Maharaj took sannyas in 94 from his own Samal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. Uh, but anyway, Maharaj has always been uh, known uh, for his sadhana and his adherence uh, 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 and uh, a great erudite scholar. It's really good fortune for all of us that uh, we getting this opportunity to hear from this person who walks this talk. Marat, thank you again uh, for joining us and giving this um, uh, opportunity. That was Pranam Hare Krishna. Looking forward to hearing from you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namaham Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So in a few days, you're going to be, we're all going to be observing the auspicious appearance day of Lord Narsingha Dev. And as a prelude to the appearance of Lord Narsingha Dev, I thought today we'd speak about, not Lord Narsingha Dev, but more about Haranyi Kashipu. <laughs> uh, Haranyi Kashipu interesting character you know just like in lanka in sri lanka there are people who worship ravan they don't worship lord ram they're devotees of ravan so Haranyakashipu is an interesting character we know from the name haranya means gold and kashipu means soft bed so is there anything wrong with that we may question, you know, what's wrong with gold? Do you know, we all like gold, right? We're eager to get more gold. Every country in the world, their economy is based on gold, or supposed to be. Nowadays, of course, economies are more based on oil than in gold. But the principle is there, the gold reserve. And soft bed, well, okay, you like to be comfortable. You know, Haranyakashipu is not a sannyasi, he's not a renunciate, really. So what's wrong if he wants to have a little comfort? That's not the problem. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Bhogaishwarya prasaptanam taya parita chaitasam 
vaya vasayatmika buddhi samado na vidyate. He says that in the minds of those who are attached to material opulence and sense gratification and who are bewildered by such things, then the resolute determination for devotional service does not take place. So there's nothing wrong with material opulence and sense gratification. But we shouldn't be bewildered by it. We shouldn't be overly attached to it. Right? Prabhupada often told us about sense gratification that it's like salt. That if there's too much salt, it's no good. If there's no salt, it's also no good. You have to have the right amount. So, Haranyakashipu, he is, you know, okay, he has his problems. He has his own plan, his own mood and mission. Just like when we study Bhagavad Gita, we learn about Prabhupada's mood and mission in presenting Bhagavad Gita. So Arani Keshipu had his plan and mission, his mood and mission. We know about him going to do austerities, his mood, very determined. You know, you, the type of austerity he was doing, of course, it was very severe austerity, torturing the body so much, having the whole, the entire body eat all the flesh eaten by ants, standing for such a long time. Great austerities. And for what purpose? To get that impossible benediction of immortality. So this is something which we want to be aware of as devotees. We don't want to be like Haranyakashipu. We don't want to be thinking about how to be immortal, how to avoid death. We know death is going to come for everyone. But still, so many people, they're trying to avoid it. They're making great efforts to avoid death. It's inevitable. But what can be done? It's the nature of the material world. And particularly, it's the nature of this planet. Mrityu Loka, the place of death. But Haranyakashipu, he doesn't want to die. He wants to get that benediction. He wants to get that blessing from Brahma that he should not die. And in order to get that blessing, he underwent so much austerities. Of course, even before that, he had his own mission, his own mood. He wanted to kill Vishnu. That was not a very noble uh, idea, is it? Not a very noble mission. You want to kill God, you want to kill the personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu. You want to kill, we shouldn't want to kill anybody, really. But this is the Asuric mentality. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes two natures. There's the divine nature, the demoniac nature. I was presenting this fact to a class recently, and one of the students protested, why only two natures? Why not more? I may not be a devotee, but I'm not a demon either. <laughs> so they were arguing like this, but Lord Krishna has made it very clear that there's only two natures. There's a Devi Sampat and Asuri Sampat. So we're constantly battling between the two. They're both within us. In the Kali Yuga, both the devotee and the demon are in the same body. And we are fighting that battle. Now which one will win? It depends which one we feed. Just like if you have two dogs. One dog may be really good and one dog may be really bad. And so the bad dog, you don't feed it, right? Let it starve. 
the same way. We have the divine nature and the demoniac nature within both of us, within all of us. If we allow that demonic mentality to flourish, then it will create havoc for us. It will bring natural reactions on us. What kind of reactions? Those actions which are associated with the mode of passion and ignorance. That's passion and ignorance, the material world, is full of passion and ignorance. So Srila Prabhupada came and presented Srimad Bhagavatam. And he describes there in the Srimad Bhagavatam that this, this, this teaching of Srimad Bhagavatam can bring about a revolution in the impious lives of the world's misdirected civilization. Even though imperfectly composed, these, these words of Srimad Bhagavatam have that potency that they can change the lives of the world's misdirected civilization to give them all an awakening to, re to reality. So impious lives, this is the problem. Harani Kashipu, he's also like that. He's not really very pious. He's a demon and demons by nature are not known for the piety. When his brother Haranyaksha was killed by Lord Varaha, his family and all the relatives, they were all lamenting, they were grieving the loss of their dear relative. And Haranyakashipu was also lamenting the loss of his own brother. At that time, he blamed Lord Vishnu. It's the nature of the demons that they like to blame others. They don't see their own faults. We like to see faults in others. We can't see anything wrong with ourselves. We should make a point to always reflect on our own situation before we try to go out and attack others and point out the wrong in others. We should think, what is our own position? So Aranyakashipu, he couldn't do that. He could only find fault, find fault with Lord Vishnu. He said, the demigods, they've taken advantage of Lord Vishnu. They've been offering him sweets and flowers and he's become so pleased with their offerings that he's become partial to them and he's taken their side against the demons. And the result is my brother, my dear brother Haranyaksha is being killed by Lord Vishnu in his form as a boar. And so he, remembering like that, Haranyakashipu vowed that he was going to cut the head of Vishnu and drink the blood. So this is another feature of the demons like Haranyakashipu, that they're fond of sucking blood. They like the taste of blood. Prabhupada saw how much people are attracted to eating meat everywhere. And he said, people like the taste of blood, they should learn that the natural way to taste blood is by drinking the milk of the cow. You don't need to kill the animals to drink the milk. You want to taste the blood of the cow, you simply drink milk. That is natural. By drinking milk, Prabhupada said, drinking milk, you get pious activities. But if you eat the flesh of the cow, you get the most sinful reactions. You have to take birth for every hair on the body of the cow. You have to take birth and be killed. 
So we are trying to present this knowledge of Krishna consciousness to the world. It's not a very easy job because many people are in the mood of Harani Kashipu. They're thinking, they're the enjoyer. They're thinking the world is meant for their pleasure, for their enjoyment. Lord Krishna describes the demonic mentality in chapter 16 of the Bhagavad Gita. He says, Ishwaraham uh, ahambhogi sedoham balavam shuki. The, de the demonic person is thinking, I am the controller. And he's thinking, I am the enjoyer. I am, str I, I am perfect, I am strong and I am happy. This is the thinking of the Asura. They're thinking this world is just simply meant for sense gratification has no other purpose. Of course, it's not wrong to want sense gratification, but there's a higher taste of sense gratification. What kind of quality of pleasure do you want from the world? Just like in ordinary life, you see the workers, the laborers, you know, they have their pleasures, their sense gratification, and the managers, the administrators, they have a different level of pleasure. They're both getting some, they're all getting some pleasure, but their pleasures are on different levels. So in the same way, human beings are meant to understand higher pleasure. Lord Rishabdev, give wonderful instructions to his sons. Prabhupada was very fond on speaking of this verse by Lord Rishabdev to his sons, that Rishabdev was appealing to his sons that, my dear sons, having achieved this rare human life, don't use it for pleasures which are available for animals like the pigs which eat stool. The pig also gets some pleasure eating his pig food. And we know when Brihaspati cursed Indra to become a pig, Indra was enjoying in the pig body, so much so that when Brihaspati came to take Indra back, Indra didn't want to go. So the nature of even the body like a pig is such that we feel happy, we feel pleasure there. So we try to understand those who are in the position of being demons, demonic people, you know, like Haranyakashipu. By nature, they are atheistic. By nature, they are materialistic. And they're inclined to all kinds of sinful activities. It's their nature. But we should understand there's a higher nature. There's the lower nature, like the pigs which eat stool, and there's a higher nature. We want to cultivate the higher nature. Lord Rishabdev told his sons to do some austerity, undergo some austerity. By austerity we can be purified. And with purification, we can experience the higher pleasure, the highest pleasure. I was just, just a, a little while ago, I was giving another class, and one of the devotees was there from Geneva in Switzerland. He's a Swiss man, and he told me he has a daughter, seven years old. So he and his wife are vegetarian, and their child, their daughter, is seven years old now, she's also been a vegetarian her whole life. But recently, going to school has become a problem for her, because all the other children in school, they're all meat eaters. 
So the daughter is come, his daughter coming home and saying, I want to eat meat. I want to be like my friends. I don't want to be different from them. He said it's very difficult for him. What can he do to help his daughter? He was asking me what to do in this situation. How can I help my daughter? So I suggested to him, I said, you have to talk to her and explain to her about animals and ask her, does she like animals? Does she like to watch them being killed? Does she know that in order to eat meat, these animals all have to be killed? So you, I suggested to him that this is one method by which he could approach his daughter and appeal to her and get her to understand how fortunate she is to be a vegetarian. Demons like Haranyakashipu stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, they said, fond of blood sucking. He said, Haranyakashipu said, my brother Haranyaksha was fond of sucking blood and I'm going to suck Lord Vishnu's blood when I cut off his head. This was a statement of Haranyakashipu. He wanted to kill Lord Vishnu. Why does he want to kill Lord Vishnu? Well, for one thing, he's an enemy, he killed his brother. Another thing is he's opposed to the Brahminical culture. He's opposed to Brahminical culture. And of course, the Brahminical culture is to do sacrifice. And sacrifice is performed for the pleasure of the demigods. And the demigods are the enemy of the demons. This is the the common thing which Prahlad was always confronted with, Prahlad Maharaj, who was trying to preach to his father, that Prahlad wanted his father, his father was always talking about his enemies. But Prahlad would say, you know, we're all, it's all the same, we shouldn't think friend and enemy, we should see everyone part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, we're all brothers and sisters, don't have this consciousness of who is the enemy. Think of everybody this equally. Demons, they don't do that. They're thinking, this is my friend, this is my enemy. This person's with me, this person's against me. So they make distinction, they discriminate between one person and another. Haranyakashipu wanted to stop the Brahminical culture and he knew that if he stopped the Brahminical culture then the demigods would not get sacrifice and then the, when the demigods don't get their sacrifice then it would create chaos on the planet and in this way Haranyakashipu will take control over everything. So Haranyakashipu then sent all of his different demonic friends that they should go everywhere and create disturbance, destroy the holy places and burn the places where people are taking care of the cows, where people are protecting the cows, go and burn the cow barns, go and burn the villages where these people live go and destroy the holy places, the ashrams, and all of these kinds of things, and cut down all the trees. We don't need trees, they're useless things. And all the sages are living in these forests, we don't want them sitting in the forest, so burn the forest, cut down all the trees. So many sinful things they were doing, all on the order, of Haranyakashipu, because Haranyakashipu wants to defeat the demigods and he wants to establish himself as the Supreme. He doesn't want people offering oblations to Vishnu 
Rather, he thinks the oblation should be offered to me, right? Ishwaraham, I am the controller. So this is the illusion, material life. We are all in this situation. It's very easy for us to become a demon. We have to really be careful and control the mind. Right? Sixth chapter, Bhagavad Gita. The mind can be the friend, but the mind can be the enemy. For one who has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friends. And for one who has failed to do so, his very mind is the greatest enemy. The, one can elevate himself by the mind, one can degrade oneself by the mind. So we have to constantly be on guard, on guard to keep the mind under control. How to, and how best to control the mind? We're very fortunate. Lord Chaitanya came to give us the wonderful and very easy method of performing sacrifice through the chanting of the holy names. Kali Yuga Dharm Harinam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vininahi Tara Prabhartan In the Kali Yuga, the sacrifice is the chanting of the holy name. And one who has the energy of Lord Krishna, then they can propagate this chant. So Lord Chaitanya has given us a Sankirtan, Yajna. It's a, actually it's the only sacrifice for the Kali Yuga. The other sacrifices we do, they're just a show. Just like when Prabhupada was establishing the deities in Vrindavan, Prabhupada knew that the the pundits in Vrindavan would not recognize our own devotees and he, he, he wanted to create a good mood, uh, to have a good relationship with the pundits in Vrindavan. So he arranged that the pundits in Vrindavan would come and do the deity installation and at the same time our devotees would do Sankirtan. So they had the pundits come and they did their pujas and everything, and they installed the deities. And at the same time, the devotees were doing kirtan. So Prabhupada has written in one of his purports in the scriptures, it's described there, that Prabhupada said, actually, the real installation of the deities was done by the devotees chanting the holy name. He said, this is actually how we invite Krishna into the deity. He said, although these pundits came and they did elaborate pujas, the actual sacrifice was performed by the devotees who did the Harinam Sankirtan. That their chanting was what really brought the deities to life. So this is the sacrifice for the Kali Yuga, very we're very fortunate, but even though it's so easy, we know that there are so many people who don't take advantage. We don't care to do the Sankirtan. We find other things to do. So it's so important for us to get time every day to do some Sankirtan, chanting of the holy names, that of all the processes of self-realization, this is the most beneficial. In fact, it's described that within the chanting of the holy names, all the other processes of devotional service are there. That within chanting the holy names, there's also hearing. When we chant properly, we will also hear. And when we chant properly, we will also remember the Lord. And with proper chanting, we will also be offering prayers. The Maha Mantra is a prayer to the Lord. And it's also worship to the Lord. Chanting the holy name, we can also, if we have the proper attitude, 
We are surrendering everything to the Lord. So all of the nine angas of bhakti are there within the chanting of the holy names. That's one reason why it's so important for us to chant the holy name and to take part in this program of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. It's so purifying, so beneficial. Of course, for people like Haranya Kashi Poo and people of that nature, then they don't like the chanting of the Holy Name. They're against it. They consider it to be a disturbance. They consider it to be a waste of time. I remember when I was a new, very young devotee, when I joined the movement, our program was every day to go on Harinam Sankirtan. And we'd go into the streets of London and we'd go and chant the Holy Name. Two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. That was like our daily program, every day. So, in England, of course, they don't have very nice climate, often wet, rainy, cold, windy. But we would go every day, and we would do this Harinam Sankirtan. So sometimes people would come, in fact, quite regularly, people would come and say, why don't you people go and do something useful? They thought what they were doing was useful. What were they doing? Running their business, selling their goods in some store or something. They could not understand what we were doing was much more useful than what they were doing. Just their different vision the devotee and the demon. What is the time of awakening for the self-controlled? Is night for the materialists. And the time of, uh, the t and what is night for the self-controlled is the time of awakening for the materialists. Right? Their day is our night and our night is their day. We see things just the opposite from each other, the devotee and the demon. Haranyakashipu and Prahlad, they're just the opposite, the devotee and the demon, both in the same body in the Kali Yuga. We have to really be careful to be on guard, to control the mind, not to fall under the influence of the material energy. Maya is so powerful. It's so cunning. People like Haranikashi Pu become so they become so bewildered, so caught up in their own thoughts. They want to stop everything. Stop these Brahmins, stop this Vedic culture, stop studying the Vedas, stop doing all this. Don't worship the deities, don't chant mantras. What should they do? People, they say, just engage in sense gratification. We have the problem like this. When, when Prabhupada began the movement, there was opposition. People were opposing. They said there was even campaign that these Hare Krishna people have been brainwashed. And Prabhupada said, yes. We are washing the brain because the brain is very dirty. And there were cases we had to go to court and we would win. We always came out victorious that at every court we recognized that this Hare Krishna movement is authorized. It is bona fide. Of course, the demons are still there. They're still there, they try to oppose, they try to stop, they tried to close down our temple in London some years ago. They said it's disturbing our little village here in England. We had to, we had to purchase land and make a new entrance for the temple, Bhaktivedanta Manor. 
in Russia some time back, there was a, in, the, in one city in Russia, they said the Bhagavad Gita is illegal and it should be banned. So we have to fight against these things. The demons are always doing their mischief, just like Haranyakashipu. He was always doing his mischief, sending his agents, doing trouble, giving trouble to the devotees. And it became so bad in the times of Haranyakashipu that because they stopped all the sacrifices, so the demigods were not getting any offerings. So the demigods had to leave heaven and they, had, they came to earth to find out what was going on, to see the situation for themselves. And Harani Kashipu he took control over the heavenly planets. For, so we see from time to time these things happen. The different demons become more powerful and they start to take control and they dominate. And it appears like the devotees have been defeated. We have to be patient, we have to be tolerant, and we have to be determined. Certainly, wherever we know from Bhagavad Gita, wherever there is Lord Krishna, the master of all mystics, and Arjuna, the greatest bowman, there will be victory. There will be morality, extraordinary power, opulent. The victory may not come immediately, it will take some time. Just like establishing Krishna consciousness movement. It took Prabhupada years to fight the material energy, to fight the demons. But Prabhupada never gave up. So that is Krishna consciousness. The mode of passion, you do something and you give up. You do, then you go and do something else and then you give up, constantly changing this one desire after another. But in Krishna consciousness, we have to be steadfast. Vaya vasayatmika buddhi ekeka ekeha kuru nandana. Those who are on this path, a resolute in determination, and their aim is one. O beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many-branched. Demons like Haranyakashipu, their intelligence is bahusaka, many-branched. One thing after another. Go here, go there. Always want to stop good things which are going on, try to stop the good things and introduce all the garbage, all the nonsense. This is the material world. We have to expect these things in the material world. We're not in the spiritual world, but still Prabhupada said, we can make this world the spiritual world. The more we give Krishna consciousness, the more we awaken people to consciousness of Krishna, the more we give them, the more bring them to the mode of goodness, get them freed from the passion and ignorance of the material world, which is so much the life of the demons, like Haranyakashipu. We want to taste the happiness of the mode of goodness. The mode of goodness is symptomized by knowledge and happiness. Of course, we don't want to just have that happiness ourselves, but we want to give it to others. We want to bring everyone to Krishna consciousness. We want to share. That is the mood of the devotee. The demon, he doesn't want to share. He wants to take for himself. Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes 16th chapter, whoever is my enemy, I will have him killed. 
and who's got more, more, more money than me, I will take his money, I will take it for myself. People like Sishupal, like that, demons, envy, their business is envy. But devotees without envy. Arjuna, his qualification, Lord Krishna says, because you're not envious of me, Arjuna, I'm speaking this knowledge today. So the envious, they can never understand the nature of devotional service. But devotional service is there within everyone. Everyone can become devotee. Everyone can become Krishna conscious. They have to be given the opportunity to hear and chant. This is our Krishna consciousness movement. So I'll stop here. I'll ask if there's any questions. Thank you so much. Yes, Hare Krishna. How much? Uh, we see that even after practicing Krishna consciousness for so many years, uh, we still sometimes find I mean, talking from personal experience that uh, demoniac qualities is still there at a very high level <laughs> and uh, it, it, it doesn't seem to uh, any way go and sometimes there is even a possibility of these demoniac qualities increasing. So uh, it, it seems more and more difficult to, to let go of these demoniac qualities over this lifetime. Uh, how is it that we can practice more or work on these demoniac qualities that you mentioned about? Well, we have to get more association. It's very important for us. Association. We reflect the qualities but of, which, of people who we associate with. That's a problem. If you don't get that, if you're not getting much association with devotees, then that's going to happen. So it's very helpful for people to just go and live in the holy dawn, to leave the world. <laughs> if, you, if it gets that bad, the, the situation gets so bad that we're just cultivating demoniac qualities, we want to recognize the danger, we want to get out of that situation. Save ourselves before it gets too late. Get out of that place and come and live in the holy dawn like Mayapur or Vrindavan. And, you know, of course, there's always, there's dangers everywhere, but certainly you get good association living in the Holy Dham. You get away from all that. Well, another thing also, cultivating the, the demonic qualities will be less likely the more we have a good sadhana, our own morning program means like waking up early in the morning and doing worship, uh, you know, waking up early in the morning, bathing, putting on tea like dressing as a devotee, then worshipping the deity, doing some worship and chanting. If you do like a program like this every morning, it has a very powerful purifying effect on the consciousness and it will keep you in Krishna consciousness throughout the day. Even though you may have to associate with people who are not devotees, you may have a, 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 not, a very but not a very spiritual environment in your work. But if you have a good morning program, if you spend like three hours in the morning, you know, maybe you get up four o'clock in the morning and you do like that till seven o'clock in the morning, then it's very helpful, very powerful and gives you a lot of spiritual strength to overcome the maya and the bad association. So this is my advice to you. You have to really want to get out of that situation. You have to be very determined, very serious to get out of this situation. And, and you have to do what's necessary 
it may not be easy for you in the beginning, but once you get in the habit of doing it, you'll see it's very, very worthwhile. So it's really in our hands. We have to make the effort ourselves. You've got to want to wake up in the morning and do these activities, and do some sadhana, spiritual program. Even you're on your own, doesn't matter. Just like many of us here in the, in, in the although I'm here in Mayapur, I'm on my own practically every morning. But every morning, get up very early, usually th three o'clock, sometimes often two thirty. Wake up every morning, and then morning program. And you know, not, I'm not usually going to the temple because there's a lot of COVID. The situation is not very, uh, very good here. There's a lot of COVID everywhere. I had it recently. I was with. I, I was positive for a while there, so I have to be very careful to protect myself. Otherwise, I could easily get it again. So. Although I'm here in Mayapur, I'm not taking part so much in the temple program, but I have my own temple, pro my own program, my own temple activities in my room and with a couple of other devotees. Like that. We have to, we have to make an effort. It's required. If we don't have this program of hearing and chanting, then naturally these demonic qualities will be there, they'll come. Because we have consciousness, just like you're, you're either in the light or in your, you're in the dark, right? Krishna Suryasam Maya Haya Andhikar. Yahan Krishna Tahannahi Maya Adhikar. If you're in the light, there's no darkness. And wherever there is Krishna consciousness, there can be no maya. So that is the point. We have to fill ourselves with Krishna consciousness. If we get a good start to the day, Prabhupada would say, if you get Mongol RT every morning, then your whole day will be auspicious. So a good start to the day, good sadhana, chanting, good number of rounds, and hearing, maybe reading even Srimad Bhagavatam a bit, doing some worship and then of course you also want to be very careful about what you eat and where you eat. We don't want to be going here and there. Srila Prabhupada told us, I remember here in Mayapur, Prabhupada was giving lecture at the time of the Gorpunima festival, it was 1976. And many devotees had come from the West and they were all thinking to go to the restaurants and to the sweet shops. Practically the first thing Prabhupada said to all of us was, please don't go to the restaurants. He said, remember, you're devotees. I said, now you're devotees, You've, you're all wearing neck beads, kunti mala, and you put the tilak, many of you shaved heads. He said, don't go and eat in the restaurants. So that's not Vaishnava. So to be a Vaishnava, of course, is not a very easy thing. We're trying to become Vaishnavas. It takes some efforts. But with the help of good association, good guidance, certainly it's possible anywhere, in any situation, you can do it. We have the perfect teacher, Srila Prabhupada, his books and all the instructions are there. So we have to just take advantage and certainly we can become very strong in our Krishna consciousness. So that's my advice to you Prabhu. We have a lot of questions on the chat. Uh, do you want me to read them out to you? Okay, Prabhu, please. Uh, 
so from Ojas V. Krishna Das, uh, his question is, given the pandemic, physical association is not possible. Can association be done via the following instructions of a Uttama Bhakta? Can the association be done by? Following the instructions of an Uttama Bhakta. Yes, definitely. Prabhupada said, Vani is more important than Vapu. So you take the Vani, the instructions, and you follow. This is good. You can... But at the same time, the personal association, whenever it's available, then you should take it. Prabhupada told another devotee, the devotee asked him, which is better, Prabhupada, if I just sit and read the books on my own or if I go and associate and hear the philosophy from a devotee? Prabhupada said, better you go and hear from a devotee rather than just sit and read the book. He said, because that devotee, he will pull your ear. <laughs> so that's the point that on our own we get a bit more uh, freedom, there's nobody there watching and we can become slack, we can become inattentive, just like Bharat Maharaj became inattentive. He was alone, without association, and he became attached to a deer. So in the same way, we can also become inattentive, and we may get attached to something which is not conducive to our Krishna consciousness. So it's good to hear the instructions of the Uttama Adhikari, very good. But you have to also be realistic and know what you can follow. Now the instructions of every of the Uttama Adhikari may not be suitable for you. you have to, we have to understand our own level. How much of the instru what instructions of the Uttama Adhikari are actually suitable for you? You have to know your own limitations. Are you able to actually apply the instructions? Don't take up something if you're going to give it up after a short time. That's not good. You have to be realistic and know what your own capabilities. So that's one point, yes? Another question? Maharaj, uh, we meet demons, we can say, on everyday basis. We would be associating with, uh, obviously, with those who are not de uh, devotees, so they fall into the category of demons. So, and we would be associating with them either at our workplace, school, college, even while we are going just down to meet on someone who can be a, a non-devotee. So how do we, like, at uh, what level should we associate or should we completely avoid them? Or, like, how should we... Uh, how should, uh, like, what is your take on associating with a demon? More, more like a non devotee. Yes. Uh, but we certainly, externally, we want to keep nice relationships with them. But at the same time, we want, for example, eat their food. We're not going to take their food. We have our own diet, our own type of food. We should be a little cautious about exactly what you want to say to these people. You have to understand their, their nature, their mentality. They're not devotees. How much are they going to be interested? So you may not reveal, for example, your own spiritual activities. They may not be able to appreciate what you do and how you practice regulated principles. These things may be beyond their understanding. So you may, you may maybe like to be more cautious about telling these things. Certainly, you know, I travel, I travel for many years in China and sometimes also, you know, sometimes even I, I had a teaching job there. So I was very careful not to let people know about my lifestyle, about my habits and what I did and what I do in my private life, you know, that's not something I want to share with other people who have no interest in Krishna consciousness. That's my own private affair. You have to know 
who to reveal these things to. Somebody has to be really close to you. You have to you know that they're definitely interested in spiritual things and then you might like to talk more to them. But people who are not devotees, you also present yourself just like a normal person, an ordinary person and just talk you know, similar things like them. You have to be able to put up with it. They talk about the weather, they talk about politics, they talk about so many things. You have to be able to go with them, talk with them a bit. You have to put up with that. But in your heart, you should always be thinking, I'm glad I'm only here for a few hours in the day. I'm not here all day and night. I'll, and soon I'll be able to go home and get away from this association. So you have to put up with it externally. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I agree. Yes, yes. But in your heart, you're thinking, just let me get out of here. Let me get home so I can chant. Purify my mind. So like that, okay? Shri Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hey, another question, Prabhu? From the chat? I have a question from Sharada. Uh, I can sense the urgency for the need for Krishna consciousness in your talk. Is this helpful in keeping the Hiranyakashipu away from us? Yes, I would say. We have to feel some urgency for Krishna Consciousness. If we really want to become Krishna Conscious, we have to understand. Prabhupada taught us how chant... I'm so sorry, there's a storm coming up here. Just let me close, close the door. So we have to understand the value of time. One moment lost cannot be bought back for any amount of gold. So time is very valuable. So we should be very careful about time. So some urgency is needed there in, just in, in trying to become Krishna conscious, yes. Don't waste time. And the longer you wait, the harder it becomes. The longer we wait, you, you may say, oh, I can't chant 16 rounds just now, I have to do it, maybe later. And, you know. But the longer you wait, the more difficult it becomes. People may say, oh, I can't follow four principles now, but later I'll do it. Oh, you never get there, you may never do it. So don't put off what can be done today. So urgency, yes, it's, it's an important point. Yes? Any other point? So, Maharaj, there's a question from Rohan. Why did Krishna allow Arjuna to commit the sin of killing the Kauravas and his teachers? Isn't that a sin? Is it because it was his duty? <laughs> well, we have to understand how Lord Krishna explains this to Arjuna that he wanted Arjuna to fight. And why did he want Arjuna to fight? Because he wanted that the Pandavas should rule. He didn't want the Kauravas to rule. So ultimately, it meant people had to die. There had to be a war and the Pandavas were, were going to win and all these other people were going to die. And so why were they going to die? Because they were sinful. The, the Kauravas and even Drona and Bhishma, they were guilty of sin. That they had committed a very serious offence against Draupadi. That they had tried to disrobe Draupadi and Drona and Bhishma were there and they didn't try to stop. They didn't try to stop the degradation. They didn't try to stop that situation. They should have done something to prevent it. But because they didn't do anything to prevent it, so they were, they were also guilty and they also had to die. Although they're devotees, but of course they're devotees and so their destination is assured. We're all going to die. It was a glorious death. 
They died on the battlefield. That's glorious. Bhishma and Drona both had glorious departures. Lord Krishna came personally to be present for the departure of Grandfather Bhishma. He, you couldn't have a... It was the most glorious departure. And Bhishma, of course, had the benediction that he could leave the body whenever he wanted. And so there was, there's no reason to lament about their, their departure and their death. And Lord Krishna taught Arjuna like that. Arjuna was thinking not to fight, but Lord Krishna said, well, if they fight, then killed on the battlefield, they'll go to heaven. But if you don't fight, then you're a coward. Your reputation is ruined. You live, it will be unbearable for you. For one who has been honored, dishonor is worse than death. So it was certainly fitting for Arjuna to fight. But the main reason why Arjuna fought was because Krishna wanted him to do it. It wasn't just only his duty, it was his duty, but the real reason for him fighting was because Krishna wanted him to do it. And Arjuna wanted to serve Krishna. He surrendered to Krishna. So it's like that. Okay, yes? Some more questions? Thank you, Maharaj, for that um, like wonderful answer, I'm sure, Rohan. If you have any more question on that, you can continue to post. And if anybody else has any questions, please post. I think that was the last one on the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No more questions. Are we done with questions? Dhruva? Yes, so we don't see any more anymore. Okay. Um, Maharaj, Nandakumar again. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, uh, this technology is definitely helping us in, in many ways that we get this instant opportunity to hear from you. Thank you for making the time for the youth. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you for giving Thanks. me the opportunity. Hare Krishna. I'm very happy to meet all of you again and hope I'll get the opportunity again sometime to meet you physically in rather person. than virtually. Yes, <laughs> yes Maharaj. We also look forward to that. Srila Prabhupada ki. Jai. Go back to Vrinda ki. Hare Jai. Krishna. Hare Krishna.